was that thing? Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is Tricky Acid and in this video we're going to look at events that happened before and after at the RPD police office between Resident Evil 2 and 3. Basically, Resident Evil 3 is set before and after the events of Resident Evil 2. The storylines are kind of intertwined and some of the events, such as Marvin who has already been bitten in RE2, or this guy's jaw that was practically falling off, we never found out how these incidents happened. But in Resident Evil 3, since the police station mission is set before any of these events, we can finally come full circle and find out how certain things turned out the way they did. So let's kick this off with Marvin and how we got bitten in the first place. So, starting with RE2, Leon speaks with him and you can see him holding his deep flesh wound and Marvin clearly isn't doing very well and he mentions this line to Leon. And don't make my mistake. If you see one of those things, uniform or not, you do not hesitate. So what did he mean by that? Well, let's jump into RE3. During the police station mission, you play as Carlos, and you notice Marvin is trying to hold someone off. And this is what happens. And there we are. He got bitten right in the stomach and ran off. Next up, we've got the outside courtyard of the Raccoon Police Office. Now for Carlos, this is a pretty relaxed environment, and it's a pretty nice night. And when Carlos enters the building, he's got his friend for company, but no clue of where Marvin went. Where'd that cop go? Don't know, don't care. We got a job to do. Switching to RE2, on the other hand, it looks a lot more worse on Leon's end, as it's a very dark, rainy night, Zombies have reached the gate that he closed to stop them from entering and when he enters there's not a single person in sight So things already look quite bleak for the rookie cop Hello Is anybody here next we've got the weird door and Leon's first day and I really love Carlos's comments on both of these events Something so subtle, but I'm really happy Capcom added these extra little snippets So this is Carlos's reaction to this door that required the spade key now here's a weird fucking door. And then switching back to RE2, Leon of course obtained that key which allowed him to enter and another thing you'll notice is that this was indeed Leon's first day on the job and you can see the welcome Leon sign hanging above and what a first day he had with him dealing with the walking dead. I'm pretty sure he must have passed probation. And switching back to RE3, when Carlos was in that very office and saw the sign, this was his reaction. Yeah. Welcome, Leon. Bet you had a kick-ass first day. And I love it, because as you can see, Leon had one bloody great first day. I mean, come on, which one of you can say you took on a horde of flesh-eating zombies on your first day on the job? God damn it. Not many! This is not how I imagined my first day. Next up is the cop with the hanging jaw. Sounds like I just made up a title for a 1950s horror movie. <laughs> Alright, that's enough of that. But it is fitting with the gruesome scene you're about to witness. From Resident Evil 2, Leon lifts this dead cop's head and his jaw is barely hanging on. But how did this happen? Well, let's switch to RE3 where you actually get to see a cutscene unraveling these secrets. What the hell was that thing? And there you have it. Some mysterious monster which we'll get to in just a moment, attacked this poor man and left the other hanging off the ceiling. And now, to get to the monster who was behind those attacks. It was the liquor enemy, and in RE2 you get a proper scene of your first encounter with one. Now in Resident Evil 3 with Carlos, you don't get any scene introducing the liquor. Instead, you just get Carlos being Carlos. There you are, dick face. Next, we've got the body in the locker. In RE3, Carlos comes across this note from someone named Hector. When you read it, it tells you to not open a specific locker because there is something inside. 
So when you approach the locker, Carlos doesn't seem too thrilled to try and open it. Better not. Which perfectly sets up the scene for Leon back in RE2. Since there's no note anymore, because Carlos had taken it earlier, you just blindly open the door and... Leon gets a lovely surprise. And lastly, while we're here, you'll notice that the entrance to this other room is blocked thanks to this burst pipe shooting some extremely hot air. And in the background, the wall has been destroyed, revealing the showers. So how did that happen, I wonder? Of course, it would be Carlos who caused all this mess. So in RE3, this place is fine, but you can see the wall is fairly damaged and he needs to get through. So why not blow it up? Carlos sets up an explosive bomb and boom! Breaks a hole through the wall and the explosion bursts the pipe behind him as well, leaving Carlos to deal with a ton of zombies. One at a time, take the number. It sucks to be popular. But that's all I have for this video. Another thing to note was that it was nice to see all the same lock combinations and the safe codes were all the same as in Resident Evil 2, so you could grab goodies out of them. I think Capcom did a fantastic job at all this fan service for anyone who's played RE2 Remake. If you enjoyed this video, please give a like as it really helps me out. So press that like button! Thank you! And I will catch you all next time. Jesus Christ!